As you get set to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner, how about doing more than just carving the turkey, perhaps hunting it yourself? Chef and outdoor adventurer Georgia Pellegrini loves to tap into her modern day pioneer spirit by showing you how to hunt and cook your dinner. She's out with a new book, Modern Pioneering, more than 150 recipes, projects, and skills for a self-sufficient life, and joins us to share how we can put our own spin on Thanksgiving. Welcome. Thank you. So can we actually hunt and gather our own Thanksgiving meal this year? Absolutely. I mean, I think that we're so used to eating the same traditional things over and over, but mm -hmm. it's really about using every part of everything, whether it's animal protein, vegetable protein, and I like to kind of switch it up. I'll, I'll cook pheasant, I'll cook wild turkey. Mm -hmm. Just I've actually had a, di a dinner where I've cooked duck, pigeon, pheasant, all of it, just to kind of switch it up. I think we're used to the same flavors, and it's, it's kind of fun to switch it. And when you say pigeon, you don't mean the kinds that are all over New York City, right? <laughs> well, you are what you eat, right? So a New York City pigeon probably wouldn't taste so good. But probably wouldn't taste so good. You have to think about where your source is. What do you say to people who are always talking about, oh, I eat organic, gluten-free, all of these fads? If you really talk about self-sufficient and you're going to nature, isn't that in itself organic? It is. I always say that it's about as free range as it gets when you go into nature. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really about, for me, pure ingredients that can speak for themselves. When you think right. about what our grandmothers ate, they just went into the backyard and, and foraged and gardened and dug, dug in the dirt and killed a chicken for dinner. And I think that the more simple we get with our food, I think the healthier we'll become. In terms of, let's say, hunting and gathering, what do you say to critics who are like, oh my gosh, hunting your food? How could you possibly do that? <laughs> Well, you know, I think we actually all kill animals. Some of us mm -hmm. just have a proxy executioner. Right. And for me, it's about paying the full price of the meal, having a true experience behind my food, whether it's gardening my food, foraging my food, hunting my food. I think the meal means so much more that way. Right. Uh, and I think it's a much more satisfying way to eat and live. And talking about satisfying, we have three very satisfying things in front of us that I want to eat so badly. What is this? The, pum sure. the pumpkin bourbon soup. So we have some wonder, these are in season right now, pumpkins, acorn squash, all kinds of squash are truly in season and I love to use every part of it. So I also like to add a little bourbon and things. So it's a wonderful soup made out of squash. We're using acorns, acorn squash to actually hold them. So you can mm -hmm. actually serve, serve them just like this. It's a wonderful sort of whimsical way to serve your yeah, meal. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and it has pumpkin seeds in it. And then the pumpkin seeds I've also turned into a little bit of a brittle. And that's going to keep you caffeinated on Thanksgiving morning. It's got some coffee grinds in there, some spices, which are really fun. I love that. And, and who knew that? Pumpkin seeds for brittle. I would have never thought to add that yeah, for a crunch. Yeah, that's a little protein and crunch and yeah. spice. So it's healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And it's then healthy. the end is sort of my favorite part of Thanksgiving, which is the leftovers. Taking all of those combinations, the turkey, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, the cranberry sauce, rolling them up into one delicious bite. It's a great thing to do with your leftovers so you're saving and you're not wasting any of it. That's incredible. Now, what's your favorite thing on Thanksgiving that you love to cook and also just love to eat? Well, so this year I'm actually making the world's best pie crust out of leaf lard, which is the best way to make a really flaky pie crust. It actually comes from the stomach lining of a pig, which may sound really creepy, but it's wow. actually delicious. And um, once again, it's about using sort of ingredients and parts of an animal that maybe we would overlook often. So. For those that are, let's say, vegan or have dietary restrictions, um, can you still have? Can you still cook with the ingredients that you use? Is there a way to cook around that? I think so. I mean, there's a lot of protein and vegetables, certainly, but I think that we're meant to be omnivores. You know, I think that there's. We used to eat a great variety of fruits, nuts, seeds, animal protein, vegetable protein, and I think if we deprive ourselves from those things too much, I think that we're not sort of eating the way we're meant to. And I think the more we restrict those things from our diet, the harder time mm -hmm. we have metabolizing them and digesting them. One of the things I found really interesting is that when you think about being self-sufficient in your diet, I'm picturing someone who lives on a gigantic farm and has a beautiful garden and their own chickens, but you say that you can live in an urban space and still stick to this recipe, to these recipes in your cookbook. How do you do that? Right, so the idea about behind this latest book, Modern Pioneering, is that you can all go get back to the land, even if it's a patio planter or mm -hmm. growing 25 pounds of potatoes in a garbage bag on your, your New York City fire escape. That's the crazy. idea is that you can roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty a little bit, make fresh mozzarella from scratch in 30 minutes, or upcycle and don't throw things out. For example, take the morning coffee grinds, mm -hmm. turning them in the, into a homemade body scrub. 
It's great for your skin. Kind of these tricks and tips that our grandparents' generation knew. I mean, right. they didn't waste anything. No. And this is sort of a time in our lives where I feel like we need to start doing more with less and be more self-sufficient. It's a very empowering thing to do. I think you become more grateful, especially for Thanksgiving when we're giving thanks for everything we have, even, even what the earth gives us, which we've Absolutely. lost sight of. Well, congratulations on your new book, and thank you for these wonderful recipes. Make sure to pick up George's new book, Modern Pioneering, More Than 150 mm -hmm. Recipes, Projects, and Skills for a Self-Sufficient Life. I'm Diana Falzo. Thanks for watching.